If you are a fan of Formula One, you might have wondered how do F1 cars keep from exploding due to the heat they generate while they are in motion. In this video, we will explore how the different components of the Formula One car's cooling system work to keep the vehicle at the optimum temperature. Let's get started. We'll start by understanding the basics of heating and cooling. At a very high level, heat is created anytime one item rubs against another item. As an example, if you rub your hands together, both hands get warmer. If you increase the speed at which you rub your hands together, your hands will get even warmer. The same principle applies for F1. The heat produced by various components of the F1 car is significant. As an example, most F1 cars will get around 12,000 RPM when the driver changes gears, and the brake temperatures can reach up to an incredible 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The tires, the clutch, the battery, and most importantly, the engine components also need to be cooled. Now let's look at cooling. At a high level, cooling in a closed system happens when a cooler item touches a warmer item. The rule is that heat will move from the warmer item to the cooler item until the two items are the same temperature. Given the heat that an F1 car generates, it cannot be cooled by something static. As a theoretical example, if the engine was placed in a bucket of water, the water would instantly evaporate and the engine temperatures would run high again soon. For this reason, the cooling agent has to be pumped around the car's components constantly to keep it cool. The best way to cool the car is to channel colder air from outside the car towards the hot components and then release it back out again. For components like the engine, a water and glycol mixture are pumped through the system to take heat away from the engine and over through the radiators where cooler air flows over them to send heat back out of the car. For parts like the brakes, it's just the airflow that cools them, and no water or liquid is required. Cooling the car using natural air comes at a cost. Catching the air using the intakes in the car causes drag. F1 cars are designed to be streamlined to allow them to cut through the air at high speed. Having areas of the car specifically designed to catch air clearly goes against this streamlining effect, meaning teams must strike a balance between staying cool and being aerodynamic. Like modern laptops, Formula One cars have a lot of electronic hardware built into them. Significant airflow passing over cooling heatsink fins are used to keep these electronic components cool. Oil is also used to keep certain components cool. For example, the gearbox is cooled by oil pumped through the system. For air-cooled components, natural air is guided towards various inlets including brake ducts and the side pod air intakes. And this cool air passes over the hot components and radiators to transfer heat away from the brakes, engine and other hot internal parts. Hot air is released through outlets located in the side pods, the side of the car and the back of the car. CAD software is used to carefully plan the setup of the car. All cooling components, including the pumps and the pipes used to transport the liquids, have to be strategically placed in a tight area to optimize the aerodynamics and meet FIA regulations. Often, the hot air that leaves an F1 car is not symmetric. Teams might design the car to have more heat escaping from one side of the car than the other. It all depends on how they place the components inside the chassis. This asymmetric airflow is a contributor to the dirty air effect which makes overtaking hard. As a trailing car approaches for an overtake in the corners, the hot asymmetric turbulent air from the car in front causes the temperatures of the trailing car to rise. This is why you will often see drivers back off for a few laps and then attempt an overtake again. Hope this video helped you learn about the Formula One car's cooling system. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and consider subscribing to the channel for more great Formula One content.